the Sensei 10, a still serious way of chiming into a very exciting mice competition by bringing back the legendary Sensei shape that first made its appearance in 2009, and it's a great opportunity for them to revive a popular shape and upgrade all the components on the inside. So all the hardware is new, it's exactly what they did. Strangely though, not following in the footsteps of like the super lightweight bodies and open shell designs with holes everywhere. Regardless, let's game. I need to hop up. Hammer point. Down to the Sound Blaster A9 is a special kind of treat for audio enthusiasts with their best EMI shielding yet, a fantastic DAC and swappable op amps plus a well-designed breakout box that includes an XLR input. Your ears deserve the best and perhaps your motherboard needs a friend. Check it out below. All right, so first of all, the 10 is a $69 mouse with a matte surface coating instead of the metallic surface of the original Sensei. And it's a truly ambidextrous shape with thumb buttons on each side. So all the lefties will appreciate this. But in a space where you put sticky padding to like change the shape of the mouse to contour to your hand, what is still series doing different? It's almost like the Sensei 10 doesn't really have any bells and whistles. It's not what I would consider to be lightweight compared to the competition. It's 92 grams without the cable. So I guess the G Pro Hero is the closest in price and weight. The shell also does not have any cutouts, just plain matte black coating without any color options. Although the surface does not scratch at all, which is awesome. And the side texture I noticed is less rubbery than the top. The cable is not paracord like, instead it's just simple rubber that is not very good at releasing those kinks. Having played with the Extra 5 M4 or the Razer Viper, you can definitely notice the difference a good cable makes. And heck, even my three-year-old Rival 310 has a better cord, which is softer than the Sensei 10. It is disappointing because it's like, $69 mouse with a really poor cable, not acceptable. And while the mouse feet are not fancy white PTFE, the glide is still pretty smooth, so no complaints for me on that. And the bottom of the mouse is also slightly transparent, kind of interesting as I haven't seen that before. The shape would accommodate all three grip styles and it's very comfy for my fingertip grip. It is slightly smaller than my Model O, but it is very close in size to the Razer Viper, which by the way is only $10 more and is lighter with a better cable and is also a truly ambidextrous body, so the thumb button are on both sides. I actually prefer Viper shape over the Sensei 10 because of those middle indentations, whereas with the Sensei 10, the rear bump is a bit more noticeable. The scroll wheel is very low into the body. I prefer this approach with light middle click, but the scroll steps are really light and soft don't really feel the tactility behind them. The DPI shift has up to five profiles adjusted in 50 CPI increments with a corresponding blink behind the scroll wheel, which is awesome. The opposite thumb buttons are out of reach, so you won't accidentally press them, while the primary clicks are mechanical switches rated at 60 million clicks, and I would consider them to be like semi-crispy. Take a listen. And finally, let's talk about that sensor. Still Series says it's their best sensor yet, the TrueMove Pro that goes up to 18,000 CPI with true one-to-one -one tracking throughout the entire range. It is different versus the previous TrueMove sensors because of what they call tilt tracking with the TrueMove Pro. From what I understand, that means that if you place the mouse down and it's not exactly flat and the slight angle, the sensor will still track accurately on any surface. From my understanding and theory, this is great for people who play at lower DPI sensitivity and like to move your mouse a lot and reposition the mouse in like your center comfortable position after like a large flick. And so when you place the mouse down, um, it will still track accurately even if the mouse is slightly angled when it comes down. As for liftoff distance, it feels like it's under two millimeters, so the same as the Razer Viper, but my Model O has even lower uh, liftoff distance, which I would consider to be better. And I'm kind of surprised that SteelSeries do not have liftoff distance adjustment 
in the software. The Still Series Engine 3, by the way, is awesome. You can remap all your buttons, set uh, your five CPI profiles, adjust the RGB illumination for the scroll wheel and the back logo, and save all those profiles to the mouse itself. And as for my gaming performance, well, it wasn't anything spectacular because I haven't really been practicing too much, but there are no flaws either. The sensor is great, the mechanical switches are quality, and the shape is fine. Plus the 92 gram body is just a reminder that not everyone wants to game with a 50 gram mouse. But I will say that after having used like the MM710 or the Model O minus, uh, I do prefer a smaller mouse like the G Pro and the G305 are really awesome too. But the Sensei 10 is a nice ambidextrous design. However, the Razer Viper is a more appealing option to me as the shape fits me better. And I was hoping for something a bit more interesting from SteelSeries, but the Sensei 10 could just be a placeholder until they launch something new in the future that follows the trend of super lightweight and potentially holes in the body to reveal whatever's inside. I don't know. We'll see. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to check out this other relevant content. All the mice are listed in the description below. Thanks so much and talk to you in the next video.